I want to be like the James Bond movie Octopus here. It's a submarine in it. And he drove off a pier. It's a gun. Welcome to the Abroad in Japan podcast. Probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host, Chris Bourne, and we're joined, as always, by England's top Japan enthusiast, Mr. Pete Donaldson himself. Pete, how the devil are you doing? What's going on? I'm good, Christopher. I am in the throes of what can only be described as hay fever hell. Uh, I'm hay fever sniffly. Hell. I uh, the pollen is going up my little schnozzle, and it's, uh, it's 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 causing issue. Is there a massive pollen count in 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 Japan, or do they have different kinds of plants i don't really know how that works i remember i think in the edo era they like chopped down all the forests and then they replanted them with a particular type of tree that has more pollen pollen per capita than any other tree right and i saw a video just a few weeks ago of like one of these trees like shaking in the wind and all the pollen falling off and i realized why japan has some of the worst hay fever on earth so Mm. you think it's bad there it's just as bad here and i'm a bit messed up myself too um yeah, it's bad. it's bad. I'm also, I'm also, uh, I'm also rather uh, hungover as well because uh, <laughs> I was in uh, Reading uh, last week and I uh, went to uh, a place where they were serving absinthe, absinthe, and it was this, it was this, uh, it was you know the uh, video game. I think it's Oblivion, one of the Elder Scrolls oh, games. Love or, that game. Or, one of those, one love of those Elder game. Scrolls. I think they're going to be remaking that. Um, and uh, they've started yes. releasing this absinthe, absinthe, uh, in a bottle that resembles one of the bottles that was in, I think, Oblivion or one of the Elder Scrolls oh. games. Anyway, and uh, I was knocking them back. <laughs> you wouldn't believe. <laughs> Strong in it, absinthe. <laughs> Strong. Turns out. It's is that the one that has like an aniseed flavour to it? Yeah, yeah. Or is, it's the, the oh, one that's, no. that, that sent. Uh, that sent. Was it Van Gogh? He was a big fan. I can't remember. Some, somebody was a big fan. So it's one of the big, one of the big painty guys. <laughs> God damn it, Pete! I come this podcast thoroughly sober, prepared, Bakari sweat in hand. You turn up still drunk from all your absence. It's a shocking, Sunday shocking. night for you. If we were recording Sunday night, I would be less hungover. But it's the That's morning true. for me. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Well, while you were getting drunk and drinking absinthe in Reading, <laughs> Van Gogh's favourite drink, apparently. That's I... that's what would be on the front of my uh, autobiography. Never yeah, forget your I... broad Japan book. <laughs> Available at all great retailers. <laughs> Might just be drinking absinthe in Reading. Oh dear, oh dear. Why well, are you doing that? I've just got back from an island, a Japanese desert island Ooh. called Oshima. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, uh, you might recall back in March or February, I opened like a bar in Kyoto. Yes. And some of you guys listening actually came along to it uh, or watching because we're on YouTube now. Hello, guys, on YouTube. Uh, yes, yeah, so the second episode where we've moved to YouTube. You can check us out. You can watch us. You can see us mm. in the flesh, in the face. I'll carry on with the story. But yeah, I opened the uh, keto bar and a guy came along called Daniel, an Australian guy, really nice dude, really chill. And he's like, oh yeah, mate, I'm a ALT on the JIT program and uh, can you guess where I'm placed? I've got a little map here at Tokyo. Would you, he, like he... To, you sound like uh, when Vic and Bob <laughs> used to do an Australian accent uh, where he'd have a little beard. <laughs> Would you like to fiddle with my beard? <laughs> Would you like to twiddle I... the sideies a little? <laughs> my Australian accent's awful, so forgive it's awful. me. It's terrible. But he was like, "All right, all right, mate, look at this fucking map here, and uh, can you guess where I'm living in Tokyo?" And I was like, um, "Well, the fact you've rolled the map out and done this dramatically would indicate it's an interesting location because it's not going to be like, oh, look at me, I'm Shibuya.'" Yeah. So I, I, I sort of went, "Oh, let me guess, you're on one of the islands," and he was like. You know, you're damn right, mate. I'm fucking on this island here. And he pointed to an island that I'd never seen or heard of before. It's called Oshima. And it's uh, it's about a two-hour boat ride, or it's three hours, sorry, 30 minutes by plane. And so I set off with the great Sea Dog VA for a wacky weekend on Oshima, escorted around by good old Dan. And it was really interesting. It was really fun. Um, this island is, is sort of dying out like a lot of Japan's islands. It's fascinating. Like, Japan has... 14,000 islands, and interestingly, only this year, a few months ago, un- until I think February this year, there were 6,800 islands in Japan. Mm. That was the official number, 6,852, I think. And they b- did like a satellite scan, and they went, wait a minute, there's a few more islands, and now there's 14,000. So they found 7,000 islands down the back of the sofa, wow. which is awesome and cool, um, but they're all dying out. 
and that's that's not so cool. And this yeah. island, Oshima, had fourteen thousand people like in the nineteen sixties. Today, it's in the it's about seven thousand. More worryingly, there's no convenience stores, Pete. No family. <gasps> no Seven Eleven. No. Uh, no McDonald's. For, Coolish for Donaldson. No, nothing for anyone. Well, there's a, there's a store you can get. You can get Coolish in a supermarket. It's not the end of the world. Don't worry. Don't worry. They have to have food and sustenance in some I'm way, out. shape, or form. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no McDonald's, though, it, it, or, or Family Mart. I don't know how he does it. But uh, what, worst of all, though, on this island, we went to this abandoned school, and we walked in, and there were, and for the first time I saw it, the Huntsman Spider. Have you oh, seen wow. the spider? Have you it's seen the Huntsman? They're enormous. Very like, leggy. Very leggy. Very leggy, and, and very bloody fast. They <clears> move so fast, like a joke speed. And... The Huntsman Spider is the main reason like I've never gone to Australia. Like everyone's like, Chris, come to Australia, and I'm like, no. When you get rid of no, your spiders I'll, and your snakes, I'll, I'll do your I'll turn up. I'll do your accent, and they'll throw me out. <laughs> my- I will get beaten up in Melbourne if I uh, if I do my accent. But like, I, yeah, we're in this abandoned school, and there were I was you know I was there was sort of here and here, and I like in like a panic attack because I'm afraid of spiders. Let alone one of the largest spiders and one of the fastest spiders. Oh, it was horrible. Mm. Um, other than that, the island was great. There was a festival there the last night. We rode uh, ATV buggies around. We did a live stream. Um, no, it was really cool. It was really cool. But oh. uh, we had to fly in this like rickety little plane as well that I didn't like. Appreciate. Um, yeah. That's the, the thing, isn't it? Plane. These these islands seem really nice, and and they are really nice. But getting there, you've either got the choice of like a you know a rickety old boat or a rickety old plane. There's the, and if you're not a confident flyer, uh, you kind of have to take the take the farmer don't you yeah i it, it's not ideal and like the um it was like 38 degrees and then they hadn't air conditioned the plane there was just, was right. just nothing yeah so you get in a box and it's like you're you, you're suffocating and it was like it wasn't until the plane got airborne well, open a window <laughs> like yeah like on the, the the time i flew over the volcano with joe yeah. where i was tasked with opening the window and letting in all <laughs> sulfuric acid fumes um yeah there's, there's no air con until the fl- the plane was airborne mm. so it was like an oven a, a skyborne oven and yeah, you know, it's awful. <laughs> but the island's cool. It's going to be a fun one. It's kind of like a wacky weekend documentary hybrid because I wanted right. to interview a lot of the locals and sort of hear what it's like living on the island. Mm. And yeah, one of the one of the elderly ladies I interviewed was really nice. She must be in her seventies. She was like, "People always come here, and you know they complain there's no." Convenience stores and McDonald's's, and I was like, <coughs> not, you know, uh, no, morons, fools, <laughs> idiots, God, Philistines, <laughs> fools. Who would do that? Who would do that? Not me. Um, oh. But like, really wonderful people, and an incredible way of life that I think is neglected. Um, it's a reminder that Japan is such a fascinating country, and just the island life. Even though it was a, a hop, skip, and a jump away from Tokyo, it felt like a tropical island. It felt like going to Okinawa. Um, had its own microclimate, had its own spiders. I mean, huntsmen are in Tokyo, but there was there's a lot more there. Fascinating place. I think it'll be a good video. I think it'll be a good little mini documentary. And if you get bored of you know hearing the islanders talk about their culture and history, you can appreciate Connor going, "Oh, this is insane! It's insane! This, this is, the car is amazing." Blah. We rented a K car, and uh, <laughs> I, I more than once when we turned a corner at high speed, two of the wheels left the road, and it sort of turned into a roller coaster. Yeah, if if I had been sitting behind Connor, <laughs> Top heavy. we would have uh, right. gone airborne, and it would have been uh, a sticky end to Wacky Weekend, uh, to say the least. Anyway, we've got a story this week from <laughs> Nate, who says, Hello, catatonic, catatonic Chris and paterfamilias Pete. I recently took a long-awaited vacation to Japan with my family, and I had an interesting experience at our onsen hotel. Having already hit the high spots of the traditional Osaka, Kyoto, Tokyo route, we rented a car and drove deep into the area around Mount Fuji, enjoying a great night in Fuji Kabaguchiko, beautiful lake, love it, and being blown, about, blown away by the incredible views at Lake Motosu. We then drove uh, alternati- alternatingly and terrifyingly on a road to Hakone and checked into the aforementioned onsen. It was a very nice hotel and we enjoyed a fantastic dinner. And then I headed up to the onsen to have my first soak in Japan. Now, it's an absolutely gorgeous outdoor outdoor onsen, and it was packed with Japanese guys of all ages. Now, keep in mind, I'm quite large and powerfully built. I like that. Powerfully built, white guy. Uh, six foot five, 225 pounds, <laughs> and I also have a huge beard. People would say I look like a biker, though I am, in fact, a pretty mild-mannered nerd. <laughs> a powerfully built, mild-mannered nerd. Uh, I'd read up on how to behave in an onsen, 
and did exactly like all of the Japanese folks. I scrubbed myself clean for 15 minutes and then I rinsed off before stepping outside to the main onsen area. The outdoor onsen is about six different pools with varying temperatures, waterfalls and whatnot. But there was one bath area that was very large and could probably comfortably seat around 30 people around the edge of the bath. There were around 15 or 20 guys sitting in the main tub and when I gingerly walked my nude self out and slowly and carefully stepped into the bath, I took up a seat. At that very moment, without saying a single word, <laughs> most of the men in the bath suddenly stood up, got out, and got into another one of the pools, leaving me with two very old gentlemen. One of the older gentlemen looked at me, smiled, nodded his head, and said, Ha ha! <laughs> Well, great, great banter. And, uh, and then continued to sit and bathe. I sat for about 10 minutes, then moved around to the other pools and to the cold pool, then drank a coffee milk and a beer, and then did it all over again. And everything seemed fine. It was great. Still, I cannot figure out why all the guys at the start practically ran out of the first main bath. Were they pissed off at a foreigner bathing? Disgusted by my massive chest? Intimidated by my American private parts? I am at a loss Anyway, keep up the great work, guys. All the best, Nate. Scaring the the locals away from the hot spring. Scaring the locals with your big, hairy chest. I mean, it, it's a real <clears throat> kind of rarefied atmosphere, isn't it, the onsen? Because <clears throat> as Westerners, we're not kind of used to having um, having to just walk around in the in, in the nudie, really. Um, I, I don't even do that at the gym. It, on the rare occasion, I find myself in a gymnasium. Um I do remember like being like harassed by some children at a pool once. They wouldn't like leave me alone. They were like in awe of me just sitting there going, mm. you know, um, as a rarity in North Japan. Of you. But uh, no, I think the last time I went on onsen, I'd climbed a mountain with some friends. We came down, went in the onsen. And I remember they, we, there was numerous pools and we all sort of spread out and a mm. few of them congregated in one pool. I remember they were quite loud and noisy. They were like, rah, 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 just joking. That was my impersonation to my friends. Yeah. And uh, some, I saw a man get out of the pool and sort of walk off. And then, he, and then a few minutes later, a member of staff came in and was like, si masen, shut, or, shut the fuck up on a guy shamas. And like, you know, they were like, oh, yeah, si masen. So don't be noisy in the onsen. Don't splash around. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know, Nate. I don't know yeah. why maybe the pool was already cramped. And they, I think it might be they were worried they might have to interact with you and talk, maybe looked a bit intimidating and scary as a powerfully built yeah. white man. Right. You know, six foot five. I'd be scared. I'd probably leave the pool, to be honest. I'd, uh, <laughs> I'd run away. But, uh, yeah, I think it's more like the, the, yeah. the fear of, oh, God, am I going to have to use my, my English now? What's going to happen here? And it's kind of like, I'll just, I'll just bail and leave the old gentleman yeah. who is refined in the ways of communication, a man who literally just went... <laughs> Why did he go, ha, ha, ha? Why, what was he laughing at? Cackle I guess away. the fact everyone left, I don't know. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, it can happen. A good friend of mine, a Japanese friend of mine, he uh, he refuses to go in onsen. I was like, oh, you know, why won't you go in? He was like, because people just go to the bathroom in them and they're not as clean as people think. And, um, you know, we had a story, didn't we, a few months ago uh, where uh, oh, a, a, a bath in, Fuku in um, was it Fukuoka had, had not cleaned the water in like five years or something, mm. two years, and the water had Legionnaire's disease in it. And I remember reading when we talked about that story all those months ago. I remember thinking, I don't want to go oh, in a hot God. spring for a little while now, and it sort of put me off for a few weeks and months. But uh, for the most part, they're clean. Yeah. Anyway, what's going on in Japan this week? Take us away, <laughs> Mr. Dawson. What's the news <laughs> in Japan? It's, it's it's very much in Japan being the summer of uh, warrant uh, sorry wanton uh, vandalism really in, in many ways because we've had so many yeah. news stories of people just scribbling on stuff, people drawing on stuff, putting their name on like UNESCO World Heritage sites and stuff like oh, this. No. And uh, Todaiji uh, Temple in Nara, uh, one of the most beautiful, uh, one of the most beautiful uh, and culturally significant locations uh, in the area, a uh, huge draw for travellers all across Japan and the world, uh, and the temple's been vandalised. Um, Not again. Well, yeah, I mean, somebody has, uh, on the uh, exterior side of a door in the Nagatsudo uh, prayer hall, uh, someone's drawn a cat. Oh, God's <laughs> sake. Drawn, a cat? Someone's drawn a cat on the wall. Um, and people are sort of, sort of thinking, is this a child? Is this a grown adult? But it was drawn... 
Uh, it's 30 to 40 centimetres wide. It was drawn on the door at a height of about uh, 70 inches, 180 centimetres. So it, it, it may look like it was drawn by a small child. The actual perpetrator is someone uh, who's teenager or, or, or upwards, basically. It's, it's the, in the dining hall that was uh, constructed in the Kamakura period of Japanese history, uh, 11, uh, 1100 to uh, 13... 100 I think mm. uh, and it's basically a massive uh, uh, important uh, part of Japan that and uh, they, they but yeah they, someone's just drawn a cat uh, and it said uh, Kamatsuka says uh, this is very re- re- regrettable uh, not just cultural properties but all things should be treated with respect so you shouldn't draw cats on anything uh, is uh, the, the abbot of that particular church so incredible Incred- incredible Incredible. Incredible. All right, so Incredible. we had this a few weeks ago, didn't we? Uh, someone also did it at the Tosho Daiji Temple in Nara. Somebody, mm. a kid, like, wrote their name in the wall. A cat, though. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, it's really annoying. It's... I... Have you have you ever um, got into uh, vandalism or graffiti? Is that ever... Because when I was a kid, uh, I turned out of oh, my man. road and someone had written Pete Donaldson, which is my name, uh, on the wall uh, of, of someone's house. And I was like... I'm going to get in trouble for that. That looks like I did that. <laughs> Blackmail. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to yeah. King Kakuji Temple and write, Pete Dawson was here <laughs> right, Pete Donaldson, in the side yeah. of the King Kakuji Temple, the Golden Pavilion. <laughs> I'm going to go to the Fushimi Nari Shrine and use a lighter to burn your smile into the shrine. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks. I mean, it, it really does suck when people do this. Um, I guess I don't... I, I, would, I remember we talked about this when someone did it a few months months ago and i was like mm. really like hard like they should be dealt with they should be thrown in prison for a day or something you know and fined accordingly and you said <laughs> i was being too harsh right you said oh you know yeah. chris autocratic dictator abroad in japan but i you know i think it needs to be dealt with at the same time this is i but but uh no at the same time you know a lot of these buildings haven't really been there for the, you know, they they haven't been there for f- two thousand years, five hundred years. They are rebuilt like every twenty to thirty years, um, out of because they're made of wood. They don't last that long. So I'm not defending it. I'm just saying, you know, it, it's it's the principle. Um, obviously, <laughs> vandalism is taken very seriously in Japan. Um, if Japan gets, I got a question the other day, like, what's your favourite thing about Japan? The the one thing you could export from Japan to the UK, and it would be like public civility. The idea of like looking after the public space and not putting a bloody chewing gum on the floor. Or in my case, when I was in the UK, I saw someone go to the toilet on an ATM that people use all day long. It just Things oh, like that annoy me. And Lord. obviously Japan, it's not perfect. Like there's Shibuya, you know, the people doing all sorts of horrible things in Shibuya on a night out. Um, but well, that's just me. It's just Pete Donaldson when he comes here, vandalising, causing mayhem, throwing up in the trains. I It... it uh, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate, and I, I don't know don't know what the punishment is. What was the punishment for this guy? Did they find who did it, or was it... No, it's no. Uh, they, they don't really know. I guess there's not a lot of CCTV kicking around those those places, mm. but um, you'd think somebody who... You see, they'd sort of be able to figure out who did it, I suppose, wouldn't they? I don't know. Like Someone looks like they had the capacity to draw a cat-like shape. It's just, it's just awful. It's not even a good cat. Mm. The effort... Nice and a good cat. A good cat. If you're going to vandalise something, at least be Banksy. At least put the effort in. But well, it's uh, like a kind of like he's sort of like done. Uh, <clears throat> at least it's it's sort of like a. It's not just the head. It's like the body with like little legs and uh, <laughs> a sort of very thick neck. A very thick necked cat. <laughs> it looks shit. <laughs> this, this person that drew this, they must have been like five. Ju- like judging yeah. by the drawing. Um, punish them, take their pocket money away. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not like, I, I'm sure this could be like painted over or, you know, rectified accordingly, but my God, yeah. I, it, it's a shame though. And I remember like the, uh, when some folks did some graffiti in the uh, Arashiyama bamboo forest and they had to like chop the bamboo mm. tree down, which is really a real shame because that takes right. years to grow back. Um, yeah, if you come to Japan, don't graffiti. If you see anyone doing it, shout at them. Like, be angry. Break their hands. Especially break if they... Break their, break their fingers. <laughs> we don't condone violence on the Born Japan podcast, but but do yeah, something. Do. Don't let them draw a shitty cat on the side of a beautiful, stunning Todaiji temple. Um, and actually, Todaiji, highly recommend checking it out. It's home to the uh, one of the largest Buddhas in Japan, the great Buddha statue mm. inside it, but beautiful place. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment, guys, with your stories, comments, and questions in the Fax Machine. 
Wow. And we're back with the fax machine. And now that we are doing it on YouTube, you can see that there is, in fact, no fax machine. Um, it's all yeah. a lie. We, we do, yeah. I, do have a bro I do have a fax machine. For a video last year, I bought, like, I spent a lot of money on a fax machine for, like, a five-second sketch. And it's just sort of sat in the cupboard. Maybe I could uh, get it out. Yeah, pop it out. Pretty good. Idea. I, I think we'd really like to hear the the noise of the fax machine <laughs> grinding away. <laughs> Can you just imagine? Like, and now it's time for the fax machine, and then just just waiting like five minutes, like. Anyway, what's <laughs> going on the fax machine? What stories and questions have we got this week, Mister Dolson? We got a message from Zachary Ulmer from Kansas City, Missouri. Greetings, Mister Affable and Pontius Pete. Uh, my uh, friends and I. I'm taking our first uh, trip to Japan ever, Lord willing, and they all want to Kyoto. They all want to go to Kyoto and Tokyo. Well, I want to explore Hokkaido. What can I do to convince my friends uh, to prioritise a Hokkaido-centric trip over a Kyoto trip? Aside from showing uh, them your videos, very good. I mean, it, it is all about compromises. A trip where there's lots of people on the trip because mm. people want to do different stuff. Um, I found uh, the most successful trips are ones in which you basically uh, tell people to just do their own thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If they want to go to Kyoto, let them have their day trip to Kyoto. If they want to queue up uh, with a load of people to go and see the monkeys in the monkey park, let them do it. Oh, that bloody monkey park. <laughs> completely up to you. I mean, yeah. Hokkaido, I, I love Hokkaido. I, it's probably my favourite prefecture in Japan, my favourite place after Yamagata. And like, I, yeah. I, I firmly believe the best way to experience Japan is through food. And eating, um, I would say yeah. that, of course. I, I mean, although we've not got the finest cuisine here, this is an energy jelly to see me <laughs> through the background jelly. here. Awful, awful. <laughs> but like, whenever I do Hokkaido videos, food is always at the forefront of what makes it appealing. You know, you've got um, Genghis Khan, not the 13th mm. century dictator, but a fantastic lamb mutton dish. Uh, there's uh, there's the miso ramen with like butter and corn in it. There's uh, there's, there's some other things. There's crab. The cra snow crab's beautiful. <laughs> like, it's an amazing place for food. And um, Sapporo has a better nightlife scene than Kyoto. So if you want a night out, I think Sapporo is better than Kyoto by a wide margin. Mm. Um, yeah, I, Hokkaido's great. I'd rather spend... I mean, I've been to both, right? So I, I can't really talk. But, like, if I had to choose right now, if I was going to spend the next three days somewhere, I would pick Sapporo over Kyoto. And, of course, right. Hokkaido... It's huge. It's it's massive. It's the second biggest island in Japan after Honshu, and there's lots of places to explore. You've got Sapporo, you've got Nobori Betsu Hot Springs, which we love. You've got uh, Lake Toyoko, the, uh, the one with the, just an ice lake with the best curry in Hokkaido, Mog Mog Curry. You've got uh, Hakodate in the south with the you know Ooh. all the scenic sites, the markets. So yeah, Hokkaido, love it, amazing place. I would recommend that over Kyoto in some respects but you've got to get a Kato once we've got a story from <laughs> Maxim who says LA from Seattle Chris and Pete my wife and I visited Japan uh, sorry visited Japan last fall and I fell in love with the look and size of the K trucks I found one uh, I found out that older ones are able to be bought in the States and I'm now considering buying one do you have any experience or opinions on these lovely small K trucks arigato gozaimasu Maxim uh, well this is lucky I've been in the K truck two days ago for the first time in several years and mm. i don't like them the fact that <laughs> they're, they're cute big, aren't they? they're not big enough for chrissy they're not they, big are, enough. They, are, they are very adorable and i guess they're, they're so am i right in saying these these k is it k car how was the actually is it k or i can't remember how it's all kind of k um, truck k car k, 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 k car yeah. um it was it was there a law introduced about the amount uh, you have to get taxed if your vehicle was over a certain size so there was a mm. um since like the 80s or 90s or whatever the, the, there's this kind of massive raft of these tiny little vehicles you only ever see in japan um and and the little trucks you sort of see are absolutely adorable aren't they sort of Poodling around the streets, the back streets of uh, of many a city. I guess so. I mean, the the reason I was in one on the island of Oshima, the aforementioned island mm. I just got back from, like it, 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 it most of the trucks and the cars were K cars I saw, uh, because people didn't need to travel that far every day. Very economical. The engines are typically under one thousand cc. Um, but like right. Connor and I were in a car going up a hill, and the, it, it, he was full throttling it, and it started to just sort of go backwards at one point, and I was like, <laughs> this is not. A sustainable form great. of transport. This is, <laughs> this is not great. This is unequivocally shit. Um, <laughs> it's weird though. Like they're very cozy. Like uh, instead of having seats at the front, you just get like a bench. So like, I felt oh, like nice. I was like touching Connor's leg. 
Um, it felt very romantic. Stop touching my leg. <laughs> what are you doing? This is insane. And like it was, <laughs> it was pay good money for that. He's a very handsome man. Yeah, they would. They would. I'd, uh, people, we should auction that an hour with Connor yeah. in the K car. T- an hour <laughs> for his next auction. One hour with me. <laughs> yes. t- touch him, touch him on a bench in a K car. Uh, well, I, I didn't realise that you didn't have separate seats. That's absolutely adorable. I definitely want one now. Uh, you can. Um, I, I've sort of been looking into how easy it would be to import a uh, uh, well, a, a Toyota Century, which was the um, sort of. Uh, Rolls Royce of the of the eighties and nineties in, yes. in Japan, um, and also possibly a, a Japanese taxi. I'd very much like a, a Toyota Japanese taxi from like the 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 nineties uh, and import it to, to to the UK. So you, 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 you get them, um, you can get them sent to like Southampton or Newcastle, uh, and but then when it gets there, you've got to pay so much import tax so, and so no, much kind of. So uh, you've got to get it MOT. You've got to get um, rear fog lights put on. You've got My to God. have it converted from kilometres to miles. So there's a lot of things to think about when it comes to uh, importing a, a Japanese car and certainly importing one of those uh, Japanese uh, care cars. But, uh, yeah, good luck, Maxim, if you fancy it. Let us know how you how you get on. Yeah, I mean, I think America's the one place I wouldn't want a care car because, again, one reason <laughs> I don't like them, if you get in a car accident, you are, like, a pancake. You will be, like, right. shoveled off or, or sprayed off the road because they're so small oh. and fragile. And can, you know, can you imagine America like a Ford pickup truck smashing into a K car? <laughs> like it wouldn't end well. Yeah, he might just it want it to sort well. of work on a, a farm or something. I don't know. <laughs> Poodle around his. Yeah, true. You know, true. you know, Americans can sometimes have massive sort of you know rafts of land. He could just be have have something to sort of <laughs> transport stuff over his land or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where uh, all the ways, lives. All the ways he can use a K-car. Yeah. But I'd like to see you get one, Pete. Um, but I suppose easy. one good thing, yeah, that's, that's one benefit. Like, one good thing is about, all, like, importing cars into the UK, for example, is uh, drive on the same side of the road here in Japan, right? So mm. you don't have to modify anything else. So you should yeah. do it. When, when are we going to know if you're going to get the 1990s taxi in your... The 1990s you gonna, taxi. When are you going to get I, it? I mean, I've got, to get, I've got to get my car working first. I'm having terrible <laughs> trouble with... Uh, I, I went to take my car to the uh, the, the, the specialist. I said, the oh, the battery's, uh, the, battery's not, the battery's not charging. I need some help with this. And uh, and then I looked in the boat. And it's just full of water. Like, absolutely oh sloshing around back there. <laughs> oh, so, uh, what have you been yeah, doing with it? Not, Driving down the River Thames? Ideal. <laughs> I don't know. It's Octopussy. Just, it's found its way. <laughs> It's the slam vent. It's the, 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 there's a vent in the back of your back of your boot. So when you slam the uh, the, the the boot, uh, it doesn't explode or whatever because it, the, the the gas needs to go somewhere. The air needs to go somewhere. So these things called <laughs> slam vents. But uh, on the car that I've got, good God, it let's water in. Bollocks! <laughs> you got drunk. You had too much absinthe. You went. I yeah, want to be like the James Bond movie Octopus here. It's a submarine in it, and you drove off a pier <laughs> and you splashed around. And uh, that's what I like to think. Hey, happened. look, if I ever do drink drive, that's what I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. Well, we got one last uh, question from Pedro from Portland. He says, Dear Chris and Pete, I'll be leaving for Japan at the end of August. I hope to practice my Japanese by conversing with the locals. My question is, do Japanese people care if you speak to them using the short form versus the polite form? For example, if I'm speaking to someone I just met at a bar. Uh, all the best, Pedro from Portland. Yes, of course, with Japanese, uh, there's lots of different ways of speaking. Um, Fundamentally, taberu is the short form. Tabemas is to, to eat, right? Tabemas. The, mm. the, the golden rule in Japan is the longer the word or the sentence, the more polite it is generally. That's as easy right. as it is and uh, simple as it comes. But honestly, if you're, if you're new to Japan, they will detect that your Japanese isn't very good when you're like, oh, uh, Wutashi wa Pedro des. Like, they, they'll probably go, oh, he's probably, he's probably just arrived in Japan. I'm not going to... Yeah take him to task on it i mean i i never get called out on it i'm notoriously bad at switching between being like really polite and formidably rude um (laughs) not deliberately just when i'm on the fly speaking i'm just very bad and i've got into some bad some really bad habits like bad habits right one informal way to say yes in japan you go "Mm, mm," like that you go "Mm, mm, mm," like "Mm," right and it's just i've (laughs) I because I you know I speak to Natsuki in Japanese and we talk very yeah. informally. That's sort of I've got that now, and I I speak to important people, and I'm like, um, 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 just it just doesn't sound good. So I've got to be careful. But don't worry, Pedro, you'll be fine, man. You'll be fine. Um, you'll yeah. be fine. Do you know the difference between polite and rude Japanese? Have you brushed up before your upcoming trip, Mister Dalson? No. Not really. No, that's what I've I've just not had the time, and it's it's annoying because it would have been quite nice to sort of learn a few more words because I I literally 
I can get by, but it's all very much just apologising for things, isn't it? Really, it is. It's just uh, you know, and I'll and I'll you know I'll do a domo arigato gozaimas, full full on full flavour uh, apologies and hellos and stuff like that. You know, but, it's, yeah. For those of you that are new to the podcast, now we're on YouTube, you should know the two main words in Pete Dolson's arsenal, his vocabulary of Japanese are yeah. uh, chigaimas. He says chigaimas a lot, which means yeah. it's different. Mistake. Yeah. And he, if you make a mistake or like, you know, so it's it's kind of the equivalent like of going like, is it this? And you go, no, it's different, right? It's kind of a polite mm. way of saying, oh, it's not that. Like, oh, chigaimas. <laughs> no, it's not that. Uh, and he also says chikan, pervert. It's his favourite word. Chican, yes. Yeah. Pervert. I like throwing that around, shouting yeah. at people. Chican, pervert. Chigaimas. Chican. Chican this. <laughs> we uh, we'll, 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 mistake. <laughs> maybe we'll have some uh, some Japanese classes before you uh, come to Japan <laughs> later in the month, Pete. But for now, guys, keep the stories, questions, comments coming into Born Japan Podcast at gmail dot com. We'll be back later in the week to do it all over again. But for now, no matter where you might be out there in the big wide world, have yourself a great few days. We'll see you right back here to do it all over again on the Born Japan Podcast. Bye for now. <laughs>